Take start up. Okay. Sparks, since this was your brainchild, I'm going to pass the baton to you. Sure, friends. We've got 25 categories uh, for guiding our discussion that we're going to go through to talk about 25 films from Ooh. Pixar. Um, cheating just a little on one category because one's about the shorts. Um, and uh, so we're going to be talking about all of the Pixar films. So spoilers ahead for Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, Wally, Up, Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Brave, Monsters University, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, Finding Dory, Cars 3, Coco, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4, Onward, Soul, Luca, and Turning Red. Oh, but we're also talking about the shorts. Can you name all the shorts, too? I'm just, just kidding. No, please, no. God. <laughs> please, God. <laughs> Lexo Stop Jr., right Jerry's game. Stop right there. Um, yeah, so uh, um, I think before we jump in, I'm just going to give like a quick opportunity for us to just say, like, um, oh, I love Pixar. I've always loved Pixar. I don't think I've seen a Pixar film I didn't enjoy at least a a good amount that I would call a good movie. I think Pixar on its worst day is still better than most studios. Um, uh, they've kept that track record pretty solid with like, they've had their bumps in the road and, and we'll definitely get into a couple of them. I'm sure just by lieu of how we're going to talk about things, but I've, I've always enjoyed the Pixar's um, how y'all feeling about Pixar, Ryan? I, I'm pretty sure you have missed a few in the catalog still. Um, I haven't seen the good dinosaur and I'll just never watch cars three. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's great, I just the Cars franchise. I don't need it in my life. It's I. I will be better without. I hear it's. It in my life. <laughs> I hear it's great. I will never touch it. Yeah, ever. Absolutely. So, I, I got other things I'd rather watch than a Cars. Cars. Movie, Cars three was almost a gap in my. What was would have been a gap in my Pixar view. I've seen them all, and like I was like not really into Cars three. But Sparks came to my house and said, "We're seeing Cars 3. <laughs> And that's what happened. So Sparks says, thanks to you, my Pixar is complete. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I love Pixar. I love all the Pixar films. I I totally agree with Sparks and everything he said about it. Yeah. Pixar is a very, very big part of my life. I mean, I remember the day my aunt came home. She or my aunt was visiting and she said, in three days, I'm going to give you and your brother a present. I didn't know what it was. It was Toy Story on VHS. And I will never forget, um, we, I came home from kindergarten. She gave us Toy Story. And for the rest of the day, we were just watching Toy Story over and over and over and over again. And every you- Pixar film that came out, or almost every Pixar film that came out, I would see in theaters. I've missed a few in theaters. I mean, obviously, Luca and Turning Red and Cars 3, I watched on a plane. Sure. But every time... Well, that's I, a different movie. Yeah, but every time... <laughs> I see what you did there. Every time a Pixar film gets out, comes out, or it gets announced, I'm excited. Pixar is just, it came to me that Pixar is just so different from your typical Disney film that it's just different enough that it, I love how they just focus on the story. Let's tell a good story. Mm-hmm. And then it goes from there. And, and it's Pixar, of- Pixar wasn't originally owned by disney they just distributed their movies Mm -hmm. um and then when when disney officially bought pixar it didn't change the company and company at all um they they have a they have a quality control there that they're just like it's it's got to be the right story to tell and we we're not forcing anything which is why it took them 10 years to do many of the sequels they've done Mm -hmm. sure yes um yeah, it's I, I, I love Pixar. I, I don't think I mean there are Pixar films I'm not a huge fan of. There are definitely Pixar's I would pick to watch over another one, but like Spark said, divorced Pixar film is still better than a lot of other studios as bad movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Pixar a lot. Uh, I, I I would say I'm at a better spot now than I was probably before the podcast started. Because there was, and I'm looking now, uh and again, uh, no no bad movies. Pixar has not made a bad movie. But when you make nothing but incredible movies, sure. and then you start making sequels that are just okay, that that quality barrier is very noticeable. Even if the movie's good, it's just it. So from basically uh, at, from Toy Story three up until Toy Story four, which is almost a decade, um, a lot of sequels came out. Brave came out, um, and a lot of that's the middle period where those are all the movies where I think they're pretty much a lot of them are good. They're fine. Um, let me think. Uh, actually, then, I I'm curious. I think you'd like the Good Dinosaur. I'm sh- I'm sure I would. 
Um, I wanted to watch Turning Red first because I yeah, because I was. Like, I think I you need... made the right call. Like Turning Red was is a higher priority. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I'm just saying, call. just you know, on a Sunday, on a Sunday morning, maybe give Good Dinosaur a shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, like Inside Out is like incredible. Um, and Coco is incredible. Uh, but like we had, we've had two more Toy Stories. We had another Incredibles. We had another Cars. Um, and just like I, I didn't want Pixar to to go the sequel route, and then they did, and that's fine. And then the sequels they gave me weren't as good as the originals. Um, mm-hmm. So I was at a point uh, up until, again, we started getting like original like Coco and Soul and Oddworld, like where we are now, um, where I was like, Pixar is not what they used to be. But now I feel that they are. I feel like they, they've come out of not even not even a negative spot, but in a spot where they felt like they, did, they couldn't be original for some reason. Um, or, or maybe they, they, they were just like, like creatively just having trouble or whatever. I don't know. Like making movies is hard. I get it. I'm definitely um, not. I'm definitely not there because I actually quite like a lot of their sequels. I think yes, I would totally even. The least. I would. Yeah. I would even go so far as to say I think I like all of their sequels, um, and some of them as much as I like the original. Fair. I think. I think Ryan has a point where like it. It just like that is a time period where all of a sudden like we were getting more sequels and prequels. Yeah. Than we were original ideas and and like he he sectioned it out pretty well like it is the toy story 3 to toy story 4 time period is is like that's where pretty much all your so- sequels and prequels happen that aren't toy mm. story 2 um yeah. and i do think like there's an amount of every everyone said and i understand it that was behind all of those projects they did it because they had the the idea for it and um i do think like i get where they came from with each of them, I, I understand it. I see the path. I see why they went. I had this idea for how to continue the story, so we finally did it. Toy and Story is the only one where I like all well, like even Toy Story Four. Like I think all those movies are great. Like right. that's the only one where I'm like they really they really had a really excellent idea for each of these movies. Yeah, um, I think I think that they they more or less had the right in you know kind of reason and and attack for. I had an idea. Here we go. We're going to do another. Um, so we'll we'll dive into the categories because um, it's it's meant to foster conversation. There's a reason why I didn't call anything here best. I I called it favorites. Um, you don't have to limit yourselves to one. If you want to talk about a couple of them, that's this is meant to be a discussion thing. I don't need you locked in on like agonizing over picking just one. Ben's giving well, me a face like he already did. <laughs> Well, now I can know I don't have to worry about my list anymore. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I wanted it to just be like things to queue up our conversation about things. So if you have more than one idea for a thing, please feel free to say it. You don't have to be like, I only picked one favorite song because I honestly, if I feel like, I feel like if we do that, there's some films we're just never going to talk about. True. Very true. Um, so uh, let's start off. Our very first th- category is um, favorite destination to live in slash destination to visit. Um destinations yeah go ahead ben so the first thing that came to my mind is a place to live in um place to live in i would love to live in the world of onward i absolutely mm-hmm. adore the, the mix of fantasy with um with modern technology and there's still magic in that world um me being the big fantasy geek that i am i feel like that would be a perfect place for me to live in i think that i would just flourish there and thrive as for a question a, for you mm-hmm. onward if the world of onward is your is your place uh would you be a normal size like as you are now but maybe blue um creature in that world or will you be a centaur who for some reason can't fit in any car i would like to be an elf per- to be perfectly honest the blue okay so you're good then yeah i would like to i would like to be an elf everything well, is chris, built for you ben just wants to step into chris pratt's character yes let's, let's be honest <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, it's fine. <laughs> I think they they got you. <laughs> they, they did. They, they totally did. Holy shit! I mean, Chris Pratt's character—that's like me if I was like more outgoing and had a D and D campaign, or I ran a D and D campaign. So, um, place I would like to visit. This is definitely a big one for me personally. But if it if it did happen, um, not Paradise Falls, but the the waterfall on Route sixty six in Cars, the first one. Oh. oh. Rayer Springs. You want to go Rayer Springs, Springs? Yeah. So I'm. Um, I mean, yes, I could ten- technically go to Rayer Springs for Cars Land, but as you, all three of you know, I've talked about this before. My road trip with my father on the original Route 66 was amazing, and when I came home after that trip, I did watch the original Cars film just for shits and giggles. Because along the road, I went to 
the cafe that inspired Flo's Cafe. I saw Cadillac Ranch. I was at so many different, I saw all the different landmarks on my trip. And I'm like, I saw that live. I've been there live. I knew where all these were. So like the town of Radio Springs and also to go to where um, Sally takes lightning with the waterfall by the road. And because I unfortunately there wasn't anything like that as far as I can recall on my trip. So just I almost call it Paradise Falls, but that's that's up. That'd be a cool place to go to as well. But I would just love to just like go and see that part where it's like the, the gorgeous canyons, the gorgeous, the, the desert, and then this this lush greenery by the waterfall. I would love to visit that. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to jump off yours, Ben, because I also put uh, to visit Radiator Springs. Nice. Um, I think cars is very good at hitting a, a nostalgia for road trips. I think it excels at doing that. Um, that's one of the, my favorite things about the film. Um, there's something I find warm and comforting about its depiction of Radiator Springs. And while I like visiting it in the sense of California Adventure, I would love to actually visit the town as it is in Radiator Springs, where it's actually like the, the sleepier, quiet town, not a theme park. Um, <laughs> True. Would be, would, be, would be really cool. And so that's, that's up there. I also, for visit, put um, the city that the Incredibles live in. Um, specifically as we see it in Incredibles 2. I think that city would be a lot of fun to go around and spend some time in. It's got like a jazzy vibe to it. I'm just in it, into it. Um, another place I mentioned visiting is I want to go to Paris a la Ratatouille. Ratatouille mm-hmm. makes it look gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, for, for living, I was torn between two places, um, which really I can pick both. Uh, I want to live in Porto Rosso from Luca. The seafaring mm, village. Yeah. Uh, I want to live there hardcore. I think that place is beautiful. I could That's spend beautiful. every day there. It's it's gorgeous. Um, and then when I'm dead, I want to spend all my time in the land of the dead. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> beautiful, baby. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I also put uh, uh, 1950s Italy, where yeah. I'd like to live. Just beautiful, really cool. Uh, I would visit Onward, because I think fancy shit's cool, but I don't want to live there. Mm. Um, I said Metroville, which is the Incredibles city. Nice. Um, cause that's where I want to live. It's a beautiful place, especially how it looks in Incredibles too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I would like to visit uh, Ratatouille's Paris. Um, because wherever I, wherever I am, I can see the Eiffel tower. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> true <laughs> so, Paris experience. The true Paris experience. No matter where I am, which direction I'm facing, I can see the Eiffel Tower. When I go to Paris, the half day I do have, then I'm gonna like try and walk around as much to see as humanly possible. I'm gonna try and like look say, Can I still see the Eiffel Tower from where I am? Remember, you gotta look in the opposite direction and it will be there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how the hell did you get there? Some lovely places. Um most iconic lead character. Uh I thought. I, when I came up with it, I was like, this will this will probably be a pretty good one. This is a pretty good way to talk about like like a cool lead character, uh, most iconic. And then I I couldn't I couldn't get away from Buzz and Woody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. When you like iconic, yeah. like no no offense to to Wally or Remy. They're they're iconic, but like cowboys and spacemen are like are, are eternal right it's I mean, hard it's hard to escape buzz and woody as as the beginning in general like with these categories it's a little hard to escape toy story <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, put, I put woody because it was only singular because i we have a best pairs i have a different best pair for because sure. i love those two but you're right buzz and buzz and woody that's that's pixar that is like you say Pixar. First thing you think of is like the Toy Story franchise. That's the one that started it all, and it still holds up twenty five films twenty years later. Yeah, yeah. I also said I just specifically said Woody. Uh, I think I think he's by far Pixar's most iconic do, character. Do you think you guys have a favorite lead character you could you could mention that, like, if you're not playing to the most iconic thing? Ooh, um, I would. S- my Ooh, my hard. my brain tells me Wally. Yeah. Like I, I just like Wally is one of my favorites just because like it's just a cute little robot. Like he, he is pretty memorable too. Uh, I'm right there with you. I think Wally's great. Um, I, I went yeah. to Mr. Incredible first, and then my brain brought up brought up Marlin. From why would you? Why would you go, Brian? Can you point at your thing? Why would you go through the Incredibles first? Is it because we've been subliminally messaging you all night? 
No, I mean, I don't want to spoil what my favorite Pixar film is because that's the last one. But, Dude, but you you landed on Marlin. Like, I want to hear about that. I don't know. I just really something about Marlin just spoke to me. Even years later, I love finding. I love finding. Nemo, it's like but... he's trying to speak to me. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> You're really cute, but I can't understand you. I don't know why. Probably just because Marlon was like very. He has like that sarcastic, dry humor sort of thing, and he's not trying to be sarcastic. I don't know why that. Why the, the why exacerbated bad energy? Yeah, very exacerbated. And it just went from Mar. It went from Mr. Incredible to like Marlon, and I'm like. Even I'm kind of confused, like, why would I think about Marlon? But he's, he's a good character, though, so. I think I think if I had to, like, pin down a favorite lead character, if I'm if I'm trying to stay away from Toy Story, and I am, damn it. <laughs> um, I I think I'd go with Miguel from Coco. Uh, oh, that's a good one. I really love him. I think I think he has a wonderful story. I think he has a wonderful heart to him. If I really tried to get away from the Toy Story thing, like, it would be Mr. Incredible. Sure. Um, I really like that first Incredibles movie, which mm-hmm. you know we'll get to. It's a, it's a lot. It's in uh, a lot of places. Uh, so for the, our next one, we're talking favorite sequel, or because there is one prequel. Um, so what's Monsters. what's up, friends? So uh, I put one, but since then you mentioned two, or we can mention like more than one. I'll put so right off the bat when when Ryan said he didn't like Cars three, that's my favorite sequel. One of my favorite sequels, anyway. I, how can I like it? I haven't seen it. That, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I and my other one is obviously Toy Story 3. I mean, holy crap, that gut punch at the end of that film still sticks with me to this day. But the reason why I put Cars 3, I love Cars 3 as to because it tells Lightning's story when he's at the end of his career and he's just trying to find his groove again. And then he and he he's able to transition from being the hotshot racer to the mentor that Doc Hudson was for him. It's Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> it's yeah in 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 a lot of ways it's yeah. old man lightning yeah. yeah yeah i mean i i really like that also i like the um the interactions between him and um the 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 lady Cruise. who eventually t- Cruz, who takes his number spoilers ryan who takes his number for her um <laughs> for the final race at the end of the, mil- of the movie and to me it's just like that feels like a general progression for lightning like he had his time as a racer it's kind of like when you see um older athletes it's either they leave the game and they're done with it or they do come back and they they start coaching they start being like a lot of baseball players they become managers they become hitting coaches and they're still part of the game they're just in a different role and they can still bask in the glory of what they did when they used to be on the field thank goodness they made cars three because of cars because cars two is legitimately what i think of as the worst pixar movie me too you're not the only one um, yeah, I, I do. Too. Thank goodness Cars Three exists. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah. go ahead, Ben. You know, I was gonna to, to divert from Cars Three. There, what, what about Toy Story Three? What else about Toy Story Three can I say? That was, to me, a Chef's Kiss ending for an era that I literally grew up with. I was in kindergarten when that movie came out. Yeah, and I grew up with Andy. Essentially, I was in college. I was going to college when Toy Story Three happened. So mm-hmm. that I, was that was such a that was such a good ending and and yeah. What else can I say about it? It's realistically probably Toy Story three for me as well. Uh, I it Toy Story three I think is is pitch perfect definition. Uh, we came back because we felt like we had to, and I agree. You clearly had to. You mm-hmm. had this idea. Yes, you had to. This this was an idea you had to return to the table with. Um. And Ryan, do you want to say something about Toy Story? No, 3? Uh, it's, Toy Story Three is also my answer. I think it's the best sequel. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to not say that. I I I definitely think it's the best. I do want to like slightly touch on Cars Three. I think I Cars Three was in my my running on favorite sequel because I think Cars Three does does the job also that I think in this lot of prequels and sequels only only Toy Story Three and Cars Three truly do. Um, where I think that they surpass their originals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Cars Three, I think, is a, is is the best of the Cars films by by a mile. Um, uh, it it's truly impressive to me the story that they they came to it with because it, it it's clearly just like different think different people were thinking of playing with those toys and came in and and made a Cars movie um, because they t- they essentially took take it from John Lasseter mm-hmm. and 
they had a clearer, more concise idea of how to tell an emotional story with those characters. So it's very hard to not be impressed by Cars 3, um, which, frankly, when it was coming out, I was writing off. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's hard not to be amazed by its by its improvement. And then I do want to mention, like, also in my running is Monsters University, to be honest. Um, oh, yeah. Monsters University, I truly love. Um, I I love that it's a story about Mike accepting not being able to achieve his dream. Yeah. That, that, that for me works mm -hmm. in spades and it works for me every time I think about it. And every time I watch it, that it's, it's a, it's a Pixar children's film, especially the time period that it came out. This is a little more common now, but at that time saying, you know, you might not be able to do the thing that you want to do and that's okay. Yeah. It's a good message. It was, yeah. it, it was something that it was in my running as well because of that arc really hit me in the right time. Yeah. Um, Ryan, do you want to say first what your sequel is? What your sequel is? He said Toy Story 3. Oh, okay. Well, did you, I was wondering if you had another one. Uh, uh, Toy Story 2. <laughs> um, <laughs> Toy Story 2, also great. <laughs> yeah. I, I tried to get away from Toy Story 2, 3, and 4. I love those movies to death, but I wanted to showcase something else. So I think the, the answer unequivocally is one of the Toy Story sequels. Um, but I also really love Cars 3 and Monsters University, which you guys have said uh, plenty. Incredibles 2, though. That is my favorite sequel. Nice. Um, I love that movie. I rewatched it um, just today, actually. Um, I think it is a very worthy follow-up to that original that, can, that pairs very nicely um, there's some really great action. The animation is gorgeous. It's it's in every way the 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 Incredibles movie I wanted Brad Bird to come back and make. Mm. Um, love that movie. Uh, I also really like Finding Dory. Those are my two like my two actual answers. Finding Dory is um, I think a very solid sequel um, with a lot of great, with a lot of great jokes. Um, I, great character work too. I really like that movie. I have to be honest. I didn't put finding dory into my consideration at all because frankly it'd been too long since i'd seen it to really sure. judge it and like i i was like i think i might like that one a lot but i honestly don't even like like how much in comparison to these others and i didn't have time to watch it so i was like i just can't but i there's a good chance there's a good chance i am, I am sure it's great uh um it's uh i don't like ellen degeneres so i'm never gonna watch it <laughs> yeah i get that I, 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 I get it um Gerald. favorite uh <laughs> favorite character design this is gonna be funny my favorite character design is from monsters university oh my gosh i love it uh dean hartscale the dragon center yeah that's mine too that is the coolest thing pixar has ever made hands down I, the first time i saw the design i was like well i'm glad i watched the movie literally for this incredible design incredible Dude, I love that. That's so good. Um, yeah. Great pull, honestly. Great pull. That 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 bit where she comes down, like the thud behind oh. them. Honestly, great use of um. That's Helen Mirren, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great use of Helen Mirren. God, fantastic. Yeah. Excellent pull. That's um, that was that's mine too. It's cool. yeah. I put Buzz Lightyear. I put Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> it's iconic. It's great. <laughs> it's it's such a good it's such a good design, especially where they ended up when you look at like some of the original concept art designs of Buzz, like what they ended up with is so so well crafted. Um to be honest, I kind of split the difference. It was him and Sully. I think they did such a good job with Sully's design of making someone who can be both a friendly monster and a scary monster. Mm -hmm. I think they rode that line pretty perfectly. He reminds me a lot of um where the wild things are. Oh, yeah. uh, conceived in a Pixar direction and I find something so wonderful about that design where I'm like when when Sully's scary I can see how that can be actually scary and when Sully's Sully it's very comforting I mean, every time I think of Sully I think of the part where he's like go to it's just I I half expected uh, Ryan when he said that his character design was from Monsters University to be the, the guy who's just a tube. <laughs> who's like, going to write this in your dream journal. I'm here to laugh with you, live with you, <laughs> cry with you. Is, uh, that, um, that's that's Charlie, um, not Charlie Hunnam, um, Charlie from Charlie Always Day. Sunny. Charlie Day, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good designs, like, not a complaint about any of the monster designs. I love, love the look of that movie. Oh, yeah. I, I was I was uh, I misinterpreted the question, and while my my 
Monsters University was definitely the dean of that college. I also really, I also really like just the character design work in uh, Coco. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is how I interpreted the question initially. <laughs> just the looks of Coco, or even the how Coco looks, and even how space looks in Wally is, or even the designs of the robots in Wally. I really like the Wally That's, robot design. I should I should actually look at my list for what I wrote down because now that you said that, I'm like, wait a minute. I I did put a third character on it, and it's Eve. Eve's character mm. design is fantastic. Mm. That was my runner up. I love Eve. Yeah, I think Eve looks looks so impressively simple yet cool uh yeah they did such a great job with her Mm -hmm. um yeah solid this is never going to come up i don't think but i just want to i want it on record i rewatched the bugs life for like the first time in 15 years uh bugs life will definitely come up at least once i'm sure okay so then i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait Um, to say i'll wait to say anything um so our next one is man. There were more contenders for this than than I thought there would be. Most memorable musical moment. Yeah, Ben, what's up? Life is oh, a highway. No. Nope. Oh, it's not from Cars. <laughs> oh. It's when Miguel sings "The World Is Me Familia" at the end of Coco because that got me crying like a little baby because he's yeah, you, yeah. See, you see the um, you see what's the what's the real grandfather's name? I forget. Uh, the one with the gold tooth, the one who died. No, I get you. I, it's been a bit. Hold on. Yeah, I, I, you, you go ahead see, and keep talking. I'll find yeah, it. You see him with a family with Grandma Coco. Hector. Run, Hector. You see Hector. Hector Cruz. You say Hector, um, with the family, and they're going in through the land of the dead. And Miguel is in his mariachi cost as mariachi outfit, playing his guitar with his family, and that got me crying. Like a little baby. So. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It's either it was either that or the La Llorona scene from Coco, because that's just so good. It's all in Spanish, and I don't understand a single lick of it, but I just can feel the passion of it. I'm like, damn, this is some good shit. But yeah, it's hard for me not to. I, this one's going to come up for sad sequence, so I, I'm not really going to get into it here. Um, for me, I thought of Remember Me, uh, but specifically when Miguel's playing it for Grandma Coco. Oh. Yeah. Um. Uh, because the first time I saw it, I, it got me and I didn't recover. <laughs> um, but I'm going to talk about that sad sequence. So instead, I'm going to spotlight. First, I'm going to spotlight. I actually it, there's some recency bias. Sure. But um, saving the mom and turning red uh, when Ooh. all of the musical pieces come together to wow. save her with four town and everything. I think I that's that. incredible. Bro, as someone who just watched that movie, let me tell you how much I was crying during that scene. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. But like, yeah. It was already, it was already so good. Like the pandas have to pull the giant kaiju into the circle. So they start doing their Cantonese chant. But then yeah. you got the ooh, whoa, ooh, ooh, ooh. you got the no the, the boys coming in, Before and then you got the friends doing the choir behind them, and it all mixes. Oh my god, dude. That's like one of the most magical Pixar moments ever. Oh. Yeah, I uh, that that became like my clear like I'm going to say even with recency bias, that's that's my favorite musical moment right now. And then I thought of Toy Story again (laughs) and I forgot about how much I've always loved Buzz climbing up while sailing. You will go sailing no more when he's trying to fly out the window when he finds out he's a toy and he falls. Oh, yeah. And I. That got close. That got really close for me. I was like, shit, I've always <laughs> loved that moment. Damn. <laughs> um, and you see his arm, his arm mm-hmm, falls off and becomes mm-hmm, Mrs. Nesbitt yeah. in the next scene. And then, of course, Randy Newman is all like, I could fly. And then it's all sad as shit. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something there's something wonderfully beautiful about, especially from like their very first film, like this, that the power of that moment, I think we've gotten pretty far away from it, but I think it's still really solid. Um, but uh, turning reds, saving the mom moment is pretty, pretty impactful, pretty hard for me to not think about. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, how about you go next? And I'll talk, I'll show what, cause mags in the chat here. I want to acknowledge what he said. So do far. it. Okay. So I guess for our least favorite world that mag doesn't want to live in is the Wally <laughs> future earth. Yeah. Well, yeah, wait, hold you, on a second. You wouldn't live on earth. earth. He's saying earth. He's saying he doesn't want to yeah. live on the earth specifically. Until maybe the end of the movie. Well, go go up into the space. Yeah, oh. yeah, because I want to be like just be a slushy a monster. Yeah, yeah, right. a, I don't think I want to be a slushy. I monster. I want my bones to be as big as my. Penis. I'm already a slushy monster. <laughs> but then he goes on to say that Ka- Disney is so close to just make straight make a kaiju movie after Ryan was talking about turning red. It's true. 
Um, yeah. Zara told me to put life as a highway, but and I was like, oh yeah. And then I realized I can't remember anything from cars anymore. So it's um, not very memorable then. <laughs> no. Um it, it's it's for it's the second uh remember me. The mm. one for, for Mama Coco. Yeah. That's Too just sad. so damn sad. Sure. There you go. And I'll be honest, it's because I forgot about the, the turning red, but if I had recalled, I probably would have mm. thought that. Do, 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 do. Ryan, is yours uh the turning red saving the mom moment? Yeah, it, before this, I I probably would have said Coco, uh, uh-huh. but like this hands down, like it, it was, it was just it was it felt like magic watching it. It was incredible. Shh. Oh wait, here's one. Here's a runner up, Wheezy singing "You've Got a Friend in Me." Oh, sure. in Toy Story Three, Toy Story Two, Toy Story Two. Oh yeah, and then oh that just makes it even more sad because it's revealed that the that voice actor who played Wheezy died. Rip. Mm-hmm. That's um, all right. Sorry. Most <laughs> most iconic voice work oh wait ben did you say your fa- most musical yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah. all right i'm sorry i got a i got an off i got an offshoot okay it's bing bong yeah do you, do you remember i i used to always say bing bong all the time it's because i saw i saw that movie once and bing bong connected so i could go bing bong so hard and i think of that i think about his voice what's right. that guy's name uh, i don't remember i uh, that's richard kind Richard oh. Kind. Yeah, that's that's a great pull. Richard Kind is really wonderful as Bing Bong. Yeah. Um I didn't put anything for most iconic voice work because some of these I didn't put anything. I wanna I wanna I think like it's impossible to talk about <laughs> iconic voice work with Pixar and not at least touch on John Ratzenberger, True. uh who is an appearing voice in almost all the Pixar films. Um so there's that. Uh the voice of Ham, the voice of the uh the transporting semi in cars the flea Mac. the yeah uh, uh all on and on and on the abominable snowman uh, all that stuff um a school of fish uh <laughs> yeah he's uh, hard n- can i he's mine sure yeah go for it because i think i think whenever i think about pixar i think about his voice immediately sure. it, it is he is the I, he is the voice I have others here that I really like that I want to showcase, but he is the voice of Pixar in my mind. Um, there's, I always, I always think about that joke in cars when they're at the drive through and they're watching trailers for Pixar movies that John Ratzenberger is all in. And the semi is like, Hey, wait, this guy who is John Ratzenberger is like, Hey, they just keep recycling the same voice actor. Mm-hmm. I'll always think about that. If I put aside Ratzenberger and the incredible talent that he is, then I have to think of two in particular. There's a lot of wonderful voice actors, a a, a literal litany of them, uh, a a whole army in these films. But there's two truly iconic performances that have really, for me, like stood apart. One is... (laughs) Larry the Cable Guy. Like, Larry the Cable Guy might just be Larry the Cable Guy, but his performance as Mater is, like, he was... Talk about a, a an actor getting a role tailor-made for them, and, like, oh, he... Yeah. Mater loves made? It. Uh, he loves it, and he, he milks so much out of it. And, like, while the Cars films, specifically, like, two, can have some detractors, and it's unfortunate, because that is Mater's film, the Cars shorts, which focus on Mater, are wonderful. I think they're super enjoyable things for kids. And Larry the Cable Guy is so 100% committed to that character. I think it's rather wonderful what he's been able to do with it. But another one that I have to say is uh, I've always loved his performance. And I and I think he's so wonderful as this role. It's hard for me not to think of him when I think of the Toy Story franchise. Is Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head is one of my favorites, absolute favorites. I think he's so great as Potato Head. Um, uh, it's so sad that we'll, whatever they decide to do with Toy Story shorts or appearances from here on, that we're not going to have him anymore because he was wonderful, just wonderful as Mr. Potato Head. Um, yeah. One of my favorite characters right from the jump uh, in the first film. So, yeah, hard for me not to think of him. Like, like you said, there's just an absolute plethora of um, voice actors, of, of actors in general who have played amazing roles. Um, I, I was thinking about um, John Goodman and Billy Crystal, Mike and Sully. You got, I mean, he's maybe a horrible person, but his performance stuck with me. Ke- uh, Kevin Spacey is Hopper. It's yeah. Yeah. amazing. It's a really good role, a really good job that he did. Um, of course, you got Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson is Frozone, but I think the voice wait, wait, is wait. Like, 
real real quick what were you saying ryan i couldn't hear you oh, oh sorry uh, i was saying like like all saying the same thing like tim allen's not a good actor but his 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 buzz is iconic yes yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. I'm, i was also um samuel L. jackson as frozone mm. i mean how many times do people parody and say um you tell me where my suit eh, is eh, stop <laughs> i'm sure that'll come up later it will yeah. so stop yeah. um, yeah. um i have but, i have um, if you want to if you want to is, is there any more that you have no, no like the two that do go that i instantly think of tom hanks and tim allen yeah mm-hmm. it's it's the easy answer the low hanging fruit i know but i don't care they're just they're just too iconic yeah uh i the the answers that were in john ratzenberger are um tim allen as buzz that's just an iconic voice um Ed Asner is Carl. Sure. Because goddamn. Like yeah. that was t- speaking about Taylor Made, that that is Ed Asner's role. Yeah. And I think that's one of his most iconic roles. So good. So good. Um and then Brad Bird as Edna Mode. Mm, great pull. I didn't think about like when the directors step in and, and voice a character. And Brad Bird as Edna Mode is a it's a wonderful one. That's great. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. she Brad Bird is amazing in that role. He, the Edna mode is iconic, partially because of Brad Bird. Um, oh, yeah. Wasn't Pete Doctor the voice of uh, Roz in um, uh, Monsters Inc? Maybe. Yes, you're correct about that. Yes, yeah. it I, is Pete um, Doctor. That's another um, one where the director came in and voiced one of the characters. Roz is a good pull as well. Roz, Roz is a good pull. I should have thought about Roz. He's like, come on. I can Where's still do that voice. paperwork, Wazowski? Like, I come can on. Still, with your permission, I can do her voice. Uh, okay. I already, I already, I already shit the bat on that one. Ryan, um, did you you mentioned yours? Yes. Can you remind for uh, what, voice what work we're again? We're doing the iconic voice work. Yeah, Bing Bong. Yeah, Bing Bong. Thank you. I, I wanted to remember it because everyone would say all the famous ones, but like Bing Bong is the thing what I think of mostly. Yeah. No, I love that. I think I think Bing Bong's a great pull. Um, uh. <laughs> Also really close for me, I, I think, is Holly Hunter as Elastigirl. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I think I think she's she's so good. <laughs> I just love her. I love that they found such a great character for her with her unique voice. I yeah. think that's wonderful. Um, Mag is in the chat and he says Jason Lee as Syndrome. Great. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Also yeah. Great. Really good. Um, let's go. Let's go on. We're going to move off films for a moment. Let's talk about favorite shorts. Mm. I, got, um, I don't know what it's called, but I know exactly what it is. Um, it's okay. the chess one, the old man playing chess. Oh, I can tell you. Hold on. Jerry's ga- it's Jerry's game. Jerry's yeah, game. Jerry's game. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite one. I love that short. I love that short so much. That, that you too. Is... I think that's that. That was my favorite for a long time until the ones I'm going to mention came out. I watched a uh, couple over the week, um, uh, and the one that made me cry the most was Lava. So, <sighs> yeah, Lava is an incredible piece of art. Um, so beautiful and so simple and like utilizing like a familiar melody but to tell its own story um beautiful stuff i love love i god i love that pull i'm so i'm so thrilled to be doing this because like we get such different answers about what speaks to us in pixar sometimes and and uh lava is so wonderful um Uh, yeah go ahead so jerry's game has always been a favorite of mine yeah um that's a that's an incredible short film uh that i watch Quite honestly, more than anything else that Pixar has made, I watched Jerry's Game more. Yeah, that uh, one. That one was released with um, Bugs Life. Oh yeah, that's right. It was. Um, but Kit Bull, which is a Sparks short, yeah, it made me cry. Mm-hmm. Every, makes me cry every single time. And Grayson, Grayson is saying the same. Uh, makes me cry every damn time. That is an incredible. As just an incredible work of art. Like it, it is a work of art. That I don't, spark short. I don't have it with me um, because I'm not living in my usual space. But I have a little um, figure of Kit Kipple, um, oh, both adorable. the dog and the cat that they released, which is really cute. Kipple was so up there for me, but it didn't. It didn't knock out my other two. I have one. I have one more, and it's because I always have to. I always have to shout this one out because it's just it is it is tailor made for me is la luna la luna oh yeah incredible short film you know uh, what, man? that that i was enjoying it 
up until the end. And then it showed me what the whole point of it was of them making the crescent moon. And I'm like, oh, this is incredible. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the payoff is so good. <laughs> um, um, I need to rewatch La Luna. I just remember I, how the the mustaches are just like the rakes or like the, the tools they use. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's it. I I tried to keep it down to two for this one, and it was La Luna. La Luna. I've always loved La Luna. Is one of the reasons I was so excited for Luca when it was coming because that's the same director, um, bringing that same style. You can see it, uh, and I love La Luna. Love La Luna, but it's hard for me to not acknowledge Piper. Mm -hmm. Piper speaks to me because I grew up around those birds. They they are on the beaches down near where Ryan is currently. Uh, that is the area where these birds live and what they do. And I was like, that's so pitch perfect to that environment I've known for my entire life. That's wild. Um, I love Piper. Ryan knows this, that in that house, there is an art piece of Piper because my mom also loved Piper. Um, uh, it's hard not to mention that one. So. Yeah. Wonderful shorts. What's the short? I don't know. Oh, was it a Pixar short? Or was it a Disney short? Of Which one where ask? Um, it's the one where the guy is constantly working, but he wants to go to the beach. That's the Disney time, one. That's a Disney one. Never mind. Um, but uh, I was just looking at the the list. There is one other one that like I thought of because I just think it's it's geniusly made. Is um day and night. Oh, that's ooh, pretty good. I, Mag just talked about that. He said he loves Sanjay's super team and Day and Night. Day and Night. Yeah, is also I think really those. Good. I think those are great ones. Pixar has. We've we've said like Pixar never misses with the films. Pixar is never missed with a short. No, oh, no. Um, all their shorts are wonderful, wonderful to watch. Um, whether it's the Spark shorts or their their classically released shorts, or honestly, sometimes their shorts attached to the characters can be even more compelling in ways. Uh, the, their film shorts um, with the film characters can be even more compelling than some of the stuff that happens in the films. Like, one of the best reasons, one of the reasons why I love going to a Pixar film in a theater is just because I know I'm going to see a short in front of it. Like the only, the only time I think I was really, I was okay. I wasn't upset, but I was bummed that the short in front of the movie wasn't a short. It was Olaf in front of Coco. Yeah. Can, can I tell you, my brother hates Coco because of that Olaf short, because he spent the entire Olaf short being like because a lot of people did this like wait why is this so long what is this is this the movie so th i thought this sucks um and then coco but that t that my brother is the kind of person that once that taste is in his mouth it never leaves mm. uh so he just hates coco now because of that short that's awful what a bummer that's, that's sad that's a great movie it's an incredible movie. They uh, shouldn't have short, put a 20 minute short in front of it. They should not have put a 20 minute short in front of that movie. That is shit. All right. Um, next up is our favorite villains slash antagonists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off. Uh, I had a very hard time with this one. I think Lotso from Toy Story Three is wonderful. I think he's a mm -hmm. great bad guy. Very much a high tier contender for me. I think Syndrome is incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful villain. Um, I think there's something fun about Al that I just can't let go of. Um, Al of Al's Toy Barn. There's something just wonderful about how gross and terrible he is. Uh, Dean Hardscrabble, who Ryan brought up earlier, I think is a great antagonist god god bless helen mirren but it's really hard for me to not talk about one of my absolute favorite villains in all of pixar and it's hopper yeah, yeah you got you already mentioned one of my shitty, favorites already shitty as kevin spacey may be hopper is an incredible villain for, for the character i yeah i mean i wrote down syndrome and then after i was done because i didn't know we can go m multiple hopper was the second was my second pick Syndrome, I mean, I love Syndrome so much because I love his origin story, how he was a, a super fan of Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible, he screwed up, but he Mr. Incredible didn't help him. He shunned him. He was like kicked him to the curb, essentially. And he grew, he essentially went from super man to super villain, all because he just didn't keep his own ego in check or his own faults. But Hopper, God, just talk Hopper. about scary. 
Hopper has one of my favorite villain moments in any Pixar film, which is where he pull he is talking to them when he finds out they're like, they're just a bunch of puny ants. And he's like, they're just a bunch of puny ants. And he takes out the little things they're eating and he throws one. Did that hurt? That no. And then he's like, well, how about this? And he pulls the whole thing down and then he makes his point. And I'm like, God damn, that is some good villain shit for sure. Hopper is my is on my list as well. Um, an incredible performance by, by Spacey and, and it's just, I was so terrified of Hopper for so long. Uh, I even had a, when I wasn't so terrified of him, I had a toy that was an alarm that I put up front outside of my door and it would tell me when people walked in, not like the door opening wouldn't. Um, (laughs) but um, that th- that that character, that design, how he moves—I constantly think about how he moves with his long strides because he's a grasshopper. Awesome character, and, and attached to how scary he was, uh, his—I um, forget his name—but the one that the, the grasshopper that was rabid that he could summon with his snaps. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Also, Richard Kind's in that movie too. He's Hopper's he is, brother. Yeah, he plays Hopper's brother. Yes. Uh, yeah. Wonderful performance from Richard Kind. Molt. He, yeah. He. Yeah. Molt because he constantly molts in those like when all the. Thanks for coming. He gets freaked out and molts in his entire thing and runs. I love that. I, good, ah, remember Ma! <laughs> <laughs> I remember Ma! Right. I just rewatched that movie. That movie's pretty good. I, I forgot how much I liked that movie. Yeah. I was obsessed with A Bug's Life as a kid. Yeah, uh, I am I was a stick. Totally obsessed. I'm also... Sorry, that's not that's the stick man. But yeah, Hop, Hopper's so good. <laughs> remember so, Ma! <laughs> uh, I, had, I had Syndrome, uh, but then I remembered who was originally my number one character design before I watched Monsters University. Uh-huh. It's Water News from Monsters, Inc. Hell Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. The spider guy, he is my favorite design from a Pixar movie, but I thought, what's cooler than an evil Spider-Man and evil dragon lady? Uh, I think Water News design is cool, and I love evil corporate energy where he's like, I'm the man in charge, but I'm also the evil one. Uh, James I Coburn, couldn't... like, I love his voice. Yes. I, I should have I should have added him, too. I think he's got a great, like, menacing, uh, like, I'm the leader, but I'll fuck you up. I uh, yeah. really, really like uh, water. Spooky <laughs> Spider-Man. That's Can have so a thousand good. children before that this company die. Yes. Uh, um, Mag Mag brought up Ernesto de la Cruz is up there for them. Uh, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yes, Ernesto. Ernesto yeah. is a fantastic villain. I have what a thief. two more that I put on my list, which are um, Lotso. Mm-hmm. That turn when Lotso goes from Oh hey, we're just helping you guys out. We're gonna start you off in the thing, and then just turn to cold hard villain. Uh, wonderful, love his backstory, love everything about that character. Um, and then Zerg. Yeah, Zerg's cool. Zerg, sure. Zerg is a villain that I've always remembered. So this is kind of on the iconic thing, but like I think he's a cool villain, especially in Toy Story. It's Toy Story Two where they had the second buzz because they opened up another Buzz Lightyear and Zerg's like, I am your father. And like at the end of that bit, they're just playing catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very Bro, funny. Son. It's one, very funny. One more villain that I just thought yeah. of. Yeah. The, the chef from Ratatouille, the short one. So I didn't think of him. And this is the thing is like, um, he's a good one. That's a good mention, Ben. Um, honorable mention I couldn't put him here because I don't really think he's even an antagonist. The critic? He's more like the idea of an antagonist. And it's Anton Ego. The yeah. Critic, oh. uh, performed yeah. by Peter O'Toole. I love him. But the thing is, I don't really think he's the antagonist or villain. But no, there's really he, no other place to mention him. Yeah. yeah. I, w- I would say the chef is more the antagonist because he's constantly trying to make the... the 100%. Whereas 100%. Whereas, he, whereas Anton Ego, he, Ego is an obstacle. That he yeah. has to overcome that rat that Remy I was called Ratatouille that Remy and Laguini have to overcome. Whereas I didn't know that was Peter O'Toole. Oh yeah, Anton Ego is Peter O'Toole. Yeah, That's wonderful. Rakakuni. Rakakuni. I'll, I'll just never forget that. Um, just never forget that his office is in the shape of a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anton Ego. Yes. God, he's so cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, he's so freaking good. Uh. Our next category, friends, is uh, favorite love story. Um, oh, I, I'm just I, gonna I'm just gonna let Ryan and I probably get it out of the way because I bet it's the same one. It's Wally, baby. Absolutely, Wally. One hundred percent, Wally. Down. Easy money. Um, I, I love me Wally. too. 
uh, go, yeah. great. Yes, welcome to the Wally Love Story <laughs> fan club. Um, there have not been, to be honest, there have not been a lot of really focused love stories in Pixar. Um, there's love stories, but they are not the focus of the, of the film. Um, they said when Toy Story 4 was being made that it was really Pixar's first love story, and I called bullshit on that. I was like, Wally's <laughs> right there, friends. Um, uh, that was John Lasseter so, who said that, and he was wrong. Um, I think... Toy Story has some really nice love story stuff uh, between Buzz and Jesse, between Woody and Bo. Um, I think there's really nice elements of that in The Incredibles. Uh, there are places where where love is an important part, romantic love, but nowhere hits it quite like Wally and Pixar. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, certainly there is an honorable mention to Up, but that love story is past right you you are more or less following like it is a love story that we are we are engaging with as reflected upon rather than currently occurring up is beautiful for that in its own way but wally is where it's at baby for love stories my yeah. my my honorable mention is woody and Bo from toy story 4 sure yeah uh yeah like the um, the amount of like emotion that the two these two robots can express without actually talking is just like a testament to how good Pixar is at what they do. Mm -hmm. Because like they are both of these characters are some of my favorite characters in Pixar's repertoire, and they don't say a single word. All they say is their name, like Pokemon. Um it's I incredible love, stuff. It's incredible. I, I love this about us, you and me, Ryan. I I love this about this, our our infatuation with Wally. I'm so glad you picked this too as well, Brandon. I just know that like Ryan's already mentioned that it, that's favorite film. My favorite or, Pixar? Or, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, that that it's that high up there. Like, I, oh God, I adore Wally so deeply. And what's um, crazy to me is when I was younger, mm. I liked it because I like space. But like for some reason, I didn't connect with it. And then I saw it again as an adult, and I'm like, what was what was I smoking? Like, not the right <laughs> stuff. Like, um, you that, weren't smoking that, good shit yet. Yeah. That La Vie and Rose montage of him treating Eve while she is uh, uh, locked in is so cute and um, wally wally is just the cutest lovesick little robot yeah uh um, essentially his love for wall for eve generates a personality within her which is just so cool cool mm -hmm. and cute wally wally is one of my most relatable characters because he screams a lot yeah and I, I feel that <laughs> uh ben yeah favorite love story it's not Wally and Eve, unfortunately. But it's How good. dare you? <laughs> Get rid of him. Get that out of here. <laughs> Get that out of here. I won't have this Wally slander in my house. <laughs> Go ahead. It's Carl and Ellie. No, that's fine. That's totally Great. wonderful. And I know it's for only five minutes. And I do agree. And I do agree. Everything about Wally and Eve is amazing. It truly is a fantastic love story. But when I, the second I saw that category that was up there, my brain instantly went to Carl and Ellie from Up. I know it's only five minutes long, but to me, that is it. I, that's what I want in a relationship. That's what I want to be with with my partner. That's what I want to eventually aspire to to grow old together, to go on these grand adventures. I mean, to with the bumps in the road. Like I love how every time there's they have their house, the tree falls in the house, crack the open the thing. Carl gets his blade broken, crack open the thing. But they just, the fact that they're, I love the scene that when they're older and they're reading, just one hand goes out, the other instantly comes to meet it. It's just like the cutest, most adorable thing. And that's like, that is true relationship goals right there. So for me, that's the best love story in Pixar. Beautiful. You're weird. Within five, within five like minutes, you. within five minutes of a movie, one of the best love stories I've ever seen in my life. All right, Spark, say that again. Oh, you're weird, but I like you. <laughs> I love that. It's like America, but South. All right. I, man, yeah. No, Up is great. Up is a great pull for that. Okay, our next category is favorite song. Can I go first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, It was really difficult not to click, not to, not to click, not to say you've got a friend in me. It's yeah. my goodness that song is iconic it is wonderful how what what better earworm has pixar ever written but i i chose un poco loco from coco mm. that is a wonderful song that i cannot get enough of i think yes. i'm gonna cheat a little bit because it's technically it's not a real play um 
It's put that thing back where you came from, or so help me. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, I had a hard time thinking of like, there's not that many, like, I mean, Pixar obviously has like original stuff, but I'm like, what immediately comes to mind? And it's just my put that thing back where you came from, or so help. Like, oh no, that's well, and, and he turns it he turns it into a song in the credits, right? Oh. It's is it in he the does. credits where you see the where you see the play they actually put the play on. I believe so. I don't, I'm gonna have to. I don't remember. I I believe you. I don't remember this. I I don't remember if it's a bonus feature or if it's in the credits, but I'm pretty sure it's in the credits. And he okay. they they turn it into like a cast song, and then there's a part yeah. where he comes out solo, and he's like, "She's out of our hair." Even better <laughs> than I actually win. All right. She, uh, the credit song at the beginning is um <laughs> one of my runner ups, which was the uh um the song that that um. Uh, that Mike and Sully sing in the credits. What's that name of that That's damn song? song. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Oh. It's, it's right there. Uh, I wouldn't have nothing shit. if I didn't have you. Yeah, I, I love that you. song. It's such a beautiful song, sung by Billy Crystal and, and John Goodman. Genuinely sad that like there's no visual accompaniment of that song anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that song's great. That's a great song, Cole. Um, for me... You've got a friend of me was close. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I did try to limit this one to one because there's a lot of good ones. Uh, one one that almost got me there is um, Toy Story 2, uh, When She Loved Me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> great, great piece. Um, but it's it's got to be Remember Me for me. Um, I think Remember Me is beautiful. Yeah, me too. In a so way, in a lot. way that I find simple and wonderful, but beautiful. Mm -hmm. The fast version, right? Not the slow mm -hmm. version. Who hate everyone hates the slow version. All all versions. All versions of Remember Me. Right. I, I didn't oh, write ben? one. I didn't write one down because the first song that came to my brain was of course you got a friend of me. How can you not? That's like quintessential Pixar from the music. But then I started thinking of um of um the stuff from Coco, like especially Remember Me, but I think my favorite song from Coco is the scene, the La Llorona scene. I think that's my favorite song on the movie. So it's outputting remember um not remember me. You got a friend of me aside, it's probably the La Llorona song. Mm. Uh runner up and nobody like you by Four Town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Great song. Well, that's, an, that's a real song that they put out that was on like on like the top ten billboard when that movie came out. I'm like, hell yes. yeah. Yeah. Hit song. Man, great stuff. Great stuff. Um we're not at score yet, Meg. We'll touch on that when we get to score. We're just talking like song songs. Score song, comes up. Song, song. Um, favorite joke. I want to be clear. This can be a visual gag. Favorite mm. joke. This one was hard as hell. Okay. Uh, I can tell you my favorite joke right off the bat, and it's very simple and very direct. And it's the one dude. <laughs> it's the one dude doing this. Well, the <laughs> nuns are playing the accordions in Coco. <laughs> and it's that because I can't not picture Brandon. <laughs> I have never been able to watch that and not picture Brandon. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. A crowd of silent onlookers and one guy just like, yeah, <laughs> just losing it. Great joke. I laugh every time I think about it. Uh, uh. In Toy Story 1. I cheated. I I I found this one online uh, because I didn't remember it because I, I I wanted to find I wanted to be specific when the, the whatever. Uh, it's it's uh, Bo Peep telling Woody you can find me just a couple blocks away, and she's literally just a couple of like of like a couple blocks of little away. blocks. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I'm like, God, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, before I before I talk about mine because I think I have a few that I just thought of. Uh, Mag says it says escape, escape, oh, no, just like escape. What's um, that one? What's that That's from? from Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. I want to say mine before you say yours, Ben. Okay, go for it. I got one. I only got one. This is hard. This is so hard because, like, I I wanted to do like Gerald, Gerald. <laughs> I'm finding Dory, but honey, where is my super suit? Uh, I don't know. Is the funniest. The whole bit is the funniest I've ever laughed in a Pixar movie, bar none ever. Mm -hmm. I Very love good. that scene. I love that moment. It is so endlessly quotable, playing in my mind at, at, through a loop all, all day, every day. I am your wife. I am the greatest good you are ever going to get. <laughs> the beep good. is for the greater good. I am your wife. <laughs> good bit. That probably is, it might, that might be the winner. 
it's it's very 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 high up there uh it was in my mention right after the the dude dancing to the nuns <laughs> i can't picture it and not laugh that part is so funny there's a lot of great jokes in pixar this is hard yeah, the one I wrote down was from Cars Three, where Lightning is driving with um with the old timers, and they're like, "Well, when the moon shines, it's like," and he doesn't understand what they're talking about because they're driving in the middle of the night, and they're talking. He's like, "Yeah, well, when the moon is shining, you can see." He's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Oh, for love of, we ran moonshine, dummy!" And they start going <laughs> off because they used to be moonshiners and bootleggers back in the twenties. Yes, I, I I loved that joke, but I. <laughs> I mean, I'm the sorry, joke. Can I, can I interrupt you real quickly and not talk about a Pixar movie? What? One second. What? One second. Um, I just remembered the brother bear bit. Quit telling everyone I'm dead. It's <laughs> not a Pixar That's, movie. I apologize. It just that is a good, good joke, though. Yeah, but I when Brandon said, Where, "Honey, where's my super suit?" That entire bit. I everyone was quoting that line. Everyone was and quoting that thing. It's they so were damn funny being Miss Frozone and Honey. It was just the funniest shit. It's so damn funny because Incredibles two reveals that her name is Honey. Yeah, and that's just such. They carried that joke over. I, I think they actually. Um, I I think it's established in the first one because I know um, Elastigirl. She says, "Say hello to Honey for me," and yes. right, right, right before they go to bowling. But you're right. That's like when he's you. That's a like a blinking you don't hear it line, and then when it goes into the second one, it's like, oh, her name really is Honey. Okay, very good. <sighs> Did you have any really, more really wonderful? Oh, um, I mean, of course, the another good joke that I like now that I'm older and I understand the reference. Um, when Buzz and Woody are under the the van. And Buzz and he's yelling, "You are a toy!" And Buzz goes, "You are set, a sad, strange little man." And I and you have my pity. Farewell. Gives him the Vulcan salute. Yeah, I think of a uh, lemon snow cones. <laughs> what makes them lemon? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, another great visual gag for in Finding Nemo when they're doing the the fish are friends not food meeting, <clears throat> and that one guy is um, uh, what you realize? It's like, oh, I seem to have lost my friend and the fish skeleton comes out of his teeth and he goes oh, and he like sucks it in so bruce doesn't see <laughs> um real real quick um he's gone to touch the butt uh <laughs> that's a good one but um mag brought up even though it's a blooper it's the raw surprise bits and he brings up an excellent point the bloopers that they used to do for the early pixar films are quite oh, okay. funny mm -hmm. um some of my favorite bits in there are Woody in Toy Story 2 messing with Buzz. Mm -hmm. And so he like walking, I always think of Buzz walking down the aisle of, of other Buzz Light years. And then there's one in one spaceship is Woody just making faces at him and Buzz can't deal with it. And I'm like, what a, what a goddamn <laughs> other level they were on to animate these stupid bloopers. I think the blooper reel I watched the most was from Bugs Life. And when we were talking about Hopper earlier, it was a scene between Hopper and the princess. And it's like, do you think I'm stupid? And she just keeps flooding her line and she just yeah. finally breaks and yells, yes. He's like, this is the 15th take. I can't take it anymore. I will be in my trailer. And I, she's still last. In Bugs Life bloopers, my favorite has always long been the um, – the one female ant who's flirting with uh, an ant next to her that turns out to be a cardboard stand-up. And then she says, oh, I did. I thought that was real. Ooh, put that thing in my car. <laughs> I, Sparks, the second you said that, I instantly thought, oh, he's talking about the car scene. He's talking about the, 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 the cutout. I was like, damn it. Um, I just realized I didn't write down the honey where is my super suit. And I want to highlight the one that I that I apparently thought was funnier until a few moments ago, um, which is what in Incredibles two, when speaking of visual gags, when they go to the happy platter because Bob wants to make it right, and Violet sees that their waiter is Tony, the boy she likes, and just all the water just <laughs> shoots out of her nose. <laughs> 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 It's just hi. I'm an apple. <laughs> Very fun. Maybe that was the funniest thing. That is pretty good. Oh, I really right. like the Incredibles movies. Favorite merchandise. Um, hard to stay away from the toys from Toy Story. I understand. <laughs> how how can we not acknowledge um, I, them? I will never forget this one toy I had from Toy Story. That is my favorite piece of merchandise. 
and I'll, do you mind if I just go right now or no go for it it was a special edition Buzz Lightyear action figure um, it was like a special talking buzz that if you I forgot what, exactly what it was called it was just, I want to say it was around when Toy Story 2 was coming out but like you turned him on you can fly with him every button had a different fr- phrase but my favorite bit was when you open his windshield and he goes ah the wind in my face that's like feels so good and the bugs up that, that close advisor that's better i bought yeah, I, don't really, I begged my parents for that toy i don't think i ever honestly i don't think i got any other merchandise past toy story if i'm being honest mm-hmm I never, I wasn't, I definitely played, I, I played the games. I played all the Toy Story games and a Monsters, Inc. game. Uh, 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 but I had the Buzz and Woody toy. But after that, I was, I moved on to, that's when I was in my Spider-Man collecting sure. era. Not so much like other toy, I Toy Story always, 2 was a great video game. Mm-hmm. I have always admired and been jealous of the fact that Sparks had, has, you still have them. Mm-hmm. The, um, the, the Buzz and Woody in the boxes they came in in universe. Mm-hmm. Um, which I always thought was such a really cool thing that they sh- should have always made like from the get, like the fact that they were just like, nah, it's plastic. Um, and not try to make like, you know, buzz Lightyear as you would get them, to- uh, Woody as you would get them. Like that was cool. But my, my answer though is the Luxo ball. Oh yeah. That's the Luxo one. ball. I got they, when they started selling them at Disneyland, I was like, mm-hmm. this is part this. This is, I cannot believe they had not done this before. That is, that is easy that is easy money that luxo ball yeah. i have cool. one uh it's great i wanted to buy luxo ball for the longest time we're gonna do that when i go in a, in a few weeks um there's the toys any toy from toy story really um i had a wonderful um bugs life toy set that was a big big version of dim the big blue beetle bug but his oh. back wings opened up into a playset with small oh. versions of the characters playing around the playset. That was really cool. Right um, <laughs> uh, there's some, there's some really wonderful clothes that have come out related to Coco that have just beautiful designs on them that I've really enjoyed seeing or getting. Um, oh, I've seen uh solely like uh solely onesies, like giant, like blue purple onesies mm-hmm. that people wear. And I have like yeah. a little, like those are cute. Uh, mm-hmm. I think all the car sets made for cars are quite cool which makes sense um there are bath toys for finding nemo that i think are really great um and, and then they stay in their lane there's a wonderful <laughs> ramen bowl set attached to turning red that i think is really well done that's like if you flip it to eat it goes from the panda to may i thought you were about to say ramen like sushi bowl for finding nemo i was like what <laughs> <laughs> i'll have the nemo please uh, yeah, yeah that, that'd, you know be, that'd be wild because onward came out right before the pandemic and everything shut down i was bummed because i would have loved to go to disneyland and buy um the brother's jacket like his mm-hmm. for sure. uh, i would love that and also i would love the staff it's hey if we're cool. talking if we're talking games the lego incredibles game is awesome mm. sure yeah games games count in this uh, I think the both both of the original Toy Story games are fantastic. Toy Story yeah. and Toy Story Two, I think, had great games. Bugs Life also. Bugs Life has a great game. Yeah. I, I remember three of them. I had the original. Or... No, I, I had. In... Toy <laughs> no, you go, Ben. You go. No, I was gonna say I remember my brother and I playing through the original Toy Story on our Windows ninety five. Um, <clears> that's the version. That's the port we had. It was a really good port. And when we finally beat it, it's probably like one of the first video games I think I ever beaten was the Toy Story game with my brother. Mm-hmm. And of course, Toy Story 2, you play as Buzz. I was, I remember liking it, but I'd also remember not understanding what I needed to do because I do remember finding the boss fight up in the attic. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And I no, I never cleared the first stage because I didn't know exactly what was going on. The The original Toy Story game was probably one of my, was was my first like real true video game because that was one my parents did get me for the computer because I didn't have a console at the time, but they did get me that one. Um, and everything else I'd had up to that point was stuff like, you know, the edutainment kind of games, which are not bad. I'm not knocking them. These are things like Pajama Sam and things. I, lo- I love those, but that's pretty much all the kind of gaming I'd done on the computer up to that point. But then Toy Story, and that was wonderful. Toy Story 2, I also, that and Bugs Life, Toy Story, Toy Story 2 and Bugs Life were all on the computer for me and they were wonderful. I think I rented Bugs Life <clears throat> when I was back in the day for the P- for the PlayStation. I could be wrong though, but I do remember seeing advertisements for that game. I don't think I actually played it. 
All right. Um, favorite duo, friends. I'm just gonna say Wally and Eve, and then yeah. I got to but that mm-hmm. sounds good. Because like, because it's about like Woody and Buzz or, or Sully and like about. Yeah. My, uh, mine's Mike, Mike and Sully. So- My, mine's Mike. Mike and Sully. Mike and Sully. Mike and Sully are great. Uh, Buzz and Woody also great. It's hard to get away from those wonderful duos. Um, yeah, it's just hard <laughs> to get away from them. <laughs> I I think that there's I think there's something wonderful in its own way about um, Carl and Russell. Ah, uh, sure. Mm, yeah. Uh, I think there's something really charming about about them over the course of their film. Uh, I, it's hard for me to think of them necessarily as a duo. Um, though, but I, 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 I figure like they probably fit into the category well enough. Um, also, you know what, uh, just cause I don't have anywhere else to meet, uh, to mention them, uh, Arlo and the little cave boy from good dinosaur. There you go. Good no, dinosaur yeah. for plug. I, um, I'm also going to plug good dinosaur in a bit. No, I have another bit where it's going to come up, but like, I give it a little. I really like the good di- I, good dinosaur, but I don't think it gets uh, proper attention because it's on the the lower tier of Pixar for sure. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, I'm just saying we got to see T Rexes ride like a like they're riding a horse. Oh, and also like a great Pretty little good. bit was a great bit in that scene was when they ate the fermented fruit and started hallucinating. That was sure. hilarious. Oh um, sure. Most stunning visuals is our next category, friends. Uh. I will I will go first. I will say um, it's it's four films for me uh, all across the board. I think they're some of the top, 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 top notch visuals of Pixar. It's Coco. It's Ratatouille. It's Luca. And it's the good dinosaur because those environments are gorgeous. Those environments are gorgeous. I would also say Wally is amazing. For all the stuff that they do in space, for all the colors, especially when they're going through the cosmos, freaking beautiful. Um, I feel bad because I feel light years gonna stop it into the ground once we once that movie comes out with all the space visuals. But Wally, I think to me, has some of the best visuals. And Coco, of course, once you get into the land of the dead, it is like I remember seeing that on screen. I was like, bullshit, they did not make this. What? <laughs> yeah. I go to I go to Coco and Luca. Uh because yeah. Everything else, it's like we got a lot of city stuff happening. Um, Wally is good, but a lot of it is either like gross Earth or just like a like following just a bunch of like people in a space station. So it doesn't focus on it being good all the time. Um, whereas some of the other ones, like Luca, just looks good the entire time. Like yeah, that dude. entire Italian vista is just like gorgeous from top underwater. Of the <clears throat> underwater looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, you did not specify if this needed to be a movie, Sparks. So, if it be permitted, I will say I have never been wowed like I was during Piper. Still haven't. Okay. I think Piper is the most gorgeous thing that Pixar has ever animated. All right. But, but if I need a movie, if I, if, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I need a movie, it's Finding Dory. Okay. Cool. Uh, I really like the visuals of Finding Dory. I think they're stunning. I love um, the underwater uh, stuff. The 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 uh, the what's not the Monterey Bay Aquarium, but was meant to be the Monterey Bay Aquarium. <laughs> that area, that's gorgeous. Um, uh, the 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 uh, the sea otters are so cute. I it's love so that weird. Movie. I I wonder what happened because we know for a fact that it was supposed to be the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and yeah. then it, they changed it, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, because they said it was going to be, and then even even in the, like the first trailer, it is, mm-hmm. and then they changed it completely. Yeah, it's wild. I don't know. Uh, Mag says he's going to go with Sparks, but he's also going to add the Incredibles for their Incredibles 1960s style fashion. I Other. yeah, I would I would have I, I would almost did that. But like Piper, I know Sparks, you talked a little bit about Piper, but Piper is such a beautiful short film. It's got uh, it's it's super cute. The feathers, the, the, it, <clears throat> it looks like uh, it looks real. It looks real. The water effects are real. The The scale of the sand is real. The texture of it, it feels like it feels like I'm watching a nature documentary, not a Pixar animated short. It is yeah. a gorgeously stunning film that I'm just constantly, every time I watch it, amazed by its visuals. Yeah. Um, good. Solid. Love these. Uh, let's go to saddest sequence, friends. <laughs> Megan told me that this was a stupid category because everybody would just say it's the opening of up and I pointed out several other sequences that made her go oh 
You're right. <laughs> Ryan, uh, you're obviously, muted. Obviously, there's the up opening, but um, what else is there, friends? Hold on, Ryan, you're muted. I was talking to myself. Um, <laughs> uh, bing bong. Yes, um, I, I want to expand on that because for me, it's uh, it's joy down there with the core memory and playing it back and realizing things and crying boy that gets to me all the way up to the to bing bong sacrifice that entire sequence i think is is perhaps the saddest in pixar i also did bing bong's death specifically her when joy is seeing when joy is is launched and bing bong is down there and she's what does he say is like give her a hug for me or something take her to the moon for me take her to the the moon for me I arrow still through the heart I still wish there was a post credit scene of Joy turning on an astronaut dream for her at the end Oh, sure. just to put her on the moon I think that would have been a perfect button yeah yeah uh, close up for me just real quick before Ben goes um, the up opening very very emotional obviously uh, it's also remember me with Graham, with Mama Coco um, mm-hmm. because it always gets me, but the first time, um, it got me and I didn't recover and I didn't recover all the way until somewhere in the credits. And then in the credits, they do the thing where everyone puts their loved ones who have passed, who worked on the film up on the screen. And I'm like, Oh, God. <laughs> and I didn't recover for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, it's up. That's the saddest thing for me. I mean, when I first saw that, come on. It's like first 20 minutes, first five minutes of the movie. Really, really, Pixar, you have to punch me that hard in the gut. But of course, then you got Coco, which had me crying like a little baby. And you know what? Even even Lava. Lava got me sad when the volcano goes in and it looks like they're not going to be together. Bro, uh, because I just watched it like yesterday. Um, The line is like, and his tears filled the ocean and he started to drown. And I'm like, ah! I mean, of course you got Inside Out, Bing Bong. I didn't think a a freaking elephant was going to make me cry. (laughs) I I remember walking out of Inside Out. It's like, God damn it, they got both. They got me twice. And because Fanny already seen it, she's like, I told you you're going to cry. He's like, no, I cried twice. I cried during Lava and I cried during the whole, the freaking movie. So... Um, bring up Mag's comment because I want to. I want to. I want to speak on it. That's a good one. Uh, toys saying goodbye in their own way. Another. I was going to mention that too. That I was... wanted to. I wanted to bring it up because I really like Andy's goodbye in Toy Story Three, but <clears throat> Woody saying "so long, partner" at the end of Toy Story Four crushed me. Crushed me. It's not yeah. my saddest moment. But my God, that's a good moment. It it was uh, like a happy cry in a way because when yeah because when he says so long partner he watches Andy drive off it is just like no he watched no no I'm talking about the one in Toy Story four about Toy Story four oh when he parts ways with Buzz oh I didn't talk about that one because if you recall our Toy Story four review that ending messed me up in a way I don't really want to look at too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Speaking of Toy Story four, I know this is like a bunch of categories back. Do you know another great funny part? It's the bit with the uh, um, with um, Key and Peele's characters, where they talk about how they're getting the key back, and you see the old lady go through a whole routine, and they just go and they just rise from the bed and stare at her, and it turns into a horror movie all of a sudden. Yes. Sorry, right, we'll, we'll be here. We'll be here all night if we reminisce. Sorry, sorry. This whole thing's reminiscing. What are we talking? No, about? no, the old topics. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're past topics. But um, yeah, the other the sad thing I was gonna say was um, yeah, Andy and the toys when Andy yeah. gives the toys to Bonnie and they're he's playing with them one last time. It's a good one. Let's go to um, favorite score uh, or scores, friends. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring up Mag. Mag uh, said earlier when we were talking about songs um, for score, uh, the Up score, um, the Up theme, the Incredibles and Monsters Inc. score, all really great, wonderful. Um, for me. Uh, it comes down to it comes down to a few it's um ratatouille i'm gonna say like it's it's these three composers stand out to me um it's thomas newman specifically for finding nemo and wally i think both of those are wonderful scores um i think finding nemo and wally both capture the environment so wonderfully in their score mm-hmm. whether it's the ocean or or space um michael giacchino's ratatouille and the incredibles both just absolutely i think ratatouille might be my top 
of all of it. I think Ratatouille has an incredible score. I think that movie gets a lot of attention, but not often for its score. Uh, Ratatouille's score is impeccable. It is Just impeccable. brilliant. Maybe one of my favorite works from Giacchino in his entire, like, entire group. Uh, I think that he's, it might be his best. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the most recent Turning Red by Ludwig Gorenson is, in, is a, an amazing score. He's incorporating the four town music into the score throughout the film. It's, it's rather impressive what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say my number one is Incredibles, but honestly my, fi- my favorite score now, and it's not just because recency, recency bias, but it is Turning Red. Uh, Ludwig, Ludwig Gorenson's score is from the first minute where he introduces it with the theme, the do, 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 like immediately I'm like, Oh, this is, catchy as shit dude like this is instantly catchy and the way he's able to turn it in a different like different uh, uh types of music using different instruments yeah doing the, the 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 boy band pop music doing the cantonese stuff mixing it all together it's it also it's also very unique by because it's using like chinese like music and stuff and like, otherwise like most music like uh, modern music american music doesn't incorporate those kind of things so it's also refreshing to hear uh that luke would that luke guy man he's insane like him giacchino like we got good people going on yeah Mm-hmm. And I'll say what my favorite is, but they're oh sorry, you want to go? No, you go, you go. Okay. Um, I'll say what my favorite is, but I don't want to really talk about because we have talked about it a lot, but I do want to highlight another score that I really enjoyed. My favorite is The Incredibles. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I hum that damn song all the damn time. So mm-hmm. the da 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 that is so good. But a another score I want to highlight because I also think it was really good and it was really impactful for the film, or at least I thought was Soul. Mm-hmm. The music in Soul I thought was really good, even like it was all the scenes where you see um, Jamie Foxx's character, whose name I'm completely blanking on, but when he's playing the piano and he's playing and he's showing all the different ja- the like the different jazz clubs and the jazz music, um, I think that's really impactful because it's like, hey, it helps with the movie, but also this is him showing you his passion. So that's a that's a great pull because uh, I, I I also think like the soul score get, has gotten a little too easily forgotten because that's Trent. Reznor and Atticus Ross doing that and they do an incredible job yeah. um, coming over from Nine Inch Nails and doing that I think they do great work with that score Nine Inch um, Nails? <clears throat> yes uh, oh yeah Trent Reznor yeah he's been doing yeah yeah he's like oh yeah damn um, right. he's also and, the uh, poser for Guardians 1 and 2 uh, it's That's not Tyler it's, Bates no it's, it's Trent Reznor it's not my favorite score but this is a good moment to wait sorry what are you what are you mentioning well, Trent Reznor is the, the composer for Guardians 1 and 2, right? Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. No. It's Tyler Bates. No. That's Tyler Bates. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, it's not my uh, favorite, but I do think it's very good, and I think it's not thought of enough in this category. Um, and it's a good time to talk about this movie for just a moment. It's um, Brave's score by Patrick Boyle. Brave's good. Brave has Brave? a really Brave might not be the worst Pixar movie, but it might be the most forgotten Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. I think so. Especially since it's a fairy tale and they put Merida in with the other Disney princesses, people forget that's a Pixar film. It's not a straight Disney film. Mm. I didn't touch it on, on it in my week, but it's the only Pixar movie I watched this week. Oh, um, no. And sure. I did because I'm like, there has to be something I can talk about here, right? And like pretty liminally, to be honest. Like I, it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing like breaking through in a way I I wish there was. And it's unfortunate. Like that movie went through such a unfortunate process of being butchered down from what it was because it was originally a film called the bear and the bow. That was much scarier. And then it got dumbed down, dumbed down to where basically became a a pseudo clone of brother bear in a way. Um, It has its own value. It's not a bad movie. Just as Ryan said, it's a good movie. It just doesn't have anything that makes it like bloom the way that, Pixar films do other than like at the time Merida's hair was incredible. The animation was amazing. Yeah. Um, but even that like has, has lost its way to time just because Pixar's gotten even better over time. So it's, but that score, that score is great. Also that song, which there's that singing when she's riding her horse and doing the mm-hmm. arrows, really good song. I really like Touch that. the sky. Yeah. I think, I, I think about touch the sky more than I think about brave. And I like brave. I actually quite like brave a lot. Um, I do too. Incredibles one and two have my favorite scores by Michael sure. Giacchino. They're in they're incredible. <laughs> like uh, the way he incorporates that jazz, uh, that kind of like old world kind of he, that movie succeeds 
partially because Giacchino's music so 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 well fits that movie. Um, that theme is iconic instantly in my mind, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And in the second one, when he makes theme songs, old '50s television theme songs for Frozone, Elastic Girl, and Mr. Incredible, are instant earworms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think both those scores are great. Some of some of Giacchino's best. Oh yeah. Um. Yes, I I think that's a solid point. Um. Favorite quote. Mm. Um. So many. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, I, this is where I wrote down, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Uh, because I really like that quote beyond just being a joke. Um, just keep swimming. Uh, I I really enjoy, this isn't flying, this is falling with style. Mm-hmm. Um, from the end of Toy Story. But I, I really want to give it to this one from Ratatouille. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. I think that's one of the best quotes in all of Pixar. That's a really good one. Uh, this isn't inspirational or anything. It's just something I think of because I think it's funny. And it's I think it's uh, Mike saying, you hear that? It's the winds of change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny. <laughs> this is where I put where is my super suit. I knew yeah. I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good quote and a joke. So like it works. Yeah. Yeah. Ben? In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We thrive on negative criticism for it's as fun to read as it is to write. <laughs> Just that whole monologue from Egon, uh, from Egon, from it, from Ego is really good. But also, which, which does get to the one I mentioned, which is the yeah, great artists yeah. can come we're, from anywhere. Yeah, we're supposed to, it goes to that. I mean, you also you got some great funny ones. It's hard for me just to pick one. You have you have the motivational ones like just keep swimming. Um, you also shark have hmm? shark, shark bait, ooh ha ha. Enough of the ooh ha ha. Um, you also have, um, you even have Merida. I was like, I just want to change my fate. <laughs> I can't pick just one. I honest to God can't. But I... <sighs> damn it! So you said you've said a few. I think I that's, okay. that's okay. That's okay. I did. I did, I did, I did I'm, see a few. I'm, genu- yeah. I'm genuinely a little surprised, but I, I guess I shouldn't be like we really wanted to pick like some some specific things. But like, it's easy to forget how great of a line to Infinity and Beyond is because it's used so much. Well, I wanted I to. I didn't because I figured you guys would. I did. Yeah, think that's why that. I wanted to make mention of it. Like I understand where we were all at, where we're like, well, we can't say that one, right? Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> but but we should acknowledge like. What a great line. What a great phrase. It's the iconic line. Yeah. yeah. If there's an iconic line to Pixar films, it's to infinity and beyond. Yeah. No capes. Um, no capes. No capes. <laughs> Damn it, that's, um, so good that's a very that's a very good one. That should have been mine. We'll never uh, forget when Ryan and I were at Comic Con, we found an Edna Mode cosplayer, and I was in my Mega Man cosplay, and she looked at me and she was like, Hmm, you're not wearing a cape. That's good. No capes. She was she was a good cosplayer. She was fun. She was fun to talk to. Her. Um, favorite sidekicks, Linguini. Linguini, that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they should have been in best duo. Ronnie uh, and Linguini should have been in best duo. Yeah, I, I think of Linguini as the sidekick. Sure. Ooh, he, Remy he, is the puppet master. Yeah, he's yeah. more like he's more like the mech. He's more he's like the, the mech. mech exactly. Mech. <laughs> How did we get Ratatouille mixed up with Neon Genesis Evangelion? How do we? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Ellen DeGeneres either, but I do think Dory is a great character. And Me I too. Think is, a, is a great sidekick to Marlin. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I also thought of Mr. Potato Head. Not traditional sidekick, but kind of belongs in that role, um, depending on where what situation we're talking about. I like him in that space. Uh, Russell from Up, I think, is a great sidekick to Carl. But um, I kind of want to spot... I, I, this is an oddball one, but I want to spotlight Julia from Luca. Mm-hmm. I think Julia, because mm-hmm. Julia doesn't really fit any other category. Julia is not a love interest. But she is a sidekick to Luca. She's just an alternate sidekick from Alberto. Um, I love her. I love her so much. I think she's wonderful. Me too. I'm, I know they're not sidekicks because they're a group, but um, the friends in Turning Red are really good. Um, mm-hmm. There's also the one. 
There's, I would call um, them psychics. I mean, they're all great because they all work together, but also another psychic that like when you said psychic, the thing that instantly went to my brain was Toe Mater. He is yeah. such a good psychic, especially in that first film with lightning. He's showing <laughs> like how it's like a how the town runs, but also it's like, hey, have some fun. This is what we do. Like the scene where they're in the where they go tractor tipping is still funny to me. This day is like that's Frank runs away. <laughs> um, yes, I think that those are those are great pools. Um, Does the oh. cockroach from Wally count? Yeah, the cockroach from Wally. Yeah, I'll give it. Yeah, to that's you. a sidekick. Yeah. That's a great um, sidekick. Out that yeah. Mag, Mag has a few good ones. Miguel's dog, Dante. Bing Bong, and the Incredible Kids. Yeah, I don't the consider Incredible the Incredible Kids, Kids a sidekick, though. It can be. I get it. They're on the cusp of main character versus sidekick. I think. I'll give it to Mag. I'll give it to Mag. Um, yeah. uh, I was going to say, when you mentioned the Turning Red friends as as sidekicks, you got the, the leader of the three, the, the main one that we see of the three with the green flannel. She's a real mm-hmm. one. Cause she keeps that Tamagotchi alive. She mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. Even oh, when so they're cute. fighting, she's like still taking care of it. Like, mm-hmm. Shut up. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Nice. Okay. Let's go to our next one, which is tastiest looking food. You would oh. think this would be a dead giveaway to Ratatouille. And it probably would have been except turning red came out. <laughs> and there's a sequence where the dad is making food and they have clearly taken what they started in Ratatouille and upgraded. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, he's cutting wait, Dyson. Let me say mine then first, and then you guys can... I did say the Ratatouille from Ratatouille. Specifically, the life-changing Ratatouille. Um, I, I thought that... Ratatouille is mine as well. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I, I've... I would never in a million years eat ratatouille. There's no way. It's not the kind of food I like. But like looking at that on that plate and what it did to that man. Yeah, I want some. <laughs> That's very it, cool, was, yeah. it was definitely the tie between. I was going to actually say all the food that Remy and um, Lugu, Linguini make in ratatouille because it all just looks so. I want to try that soup that he makes so bad. Mm. Um. And, and of course, the scene where the dad's cooking and turning red. Those are like the two tastiest things. But I do have to agree with Brandon. I want to try Ratatouille just because of what that scene in Ratatouille did to the man. So I, I want I, to try it. I do like uh, uh, that when we're introduced to the dad cooking, like you expect him to be like a big chef or something. Mm-hmm. And we're, it's like super cut in. And then it's just like a dude. <laughs> yes, like a dad. I'm like, oh, that's so perfect. And it looks so it's like so artful. It's like a Burger King commercial the way they yeah. film the food, like getting served up. I think both of those are, are wonderful pieces. I just wanted to highlight. They do such a good job with how food is created. Like, um, they're both the sec- they're both incredible. Like the second we see the food in um mm-hmm. in turning red, I remember I was talking with fans, it's like this is like a scene in studio Gi- in any studio Ghibli film to start making food. Because mm, yeah, Studio yeah, Ghibli yeah. also has that thing. And Damn it, you're right, Mag. The Massimo's pasta. Oh, yeah, and Luca Massimo's, looks good. Massimo's okay. pasta. The oh, that does look good. And I'm a pasta whore. Oh my god. And the, New York, oh. the New York pizza in in Seoul, I think. It's so right. It looks. Damn it. All right. Damn it. You know what you don't want? You don't want the pizza with broccoli on it from Inside Out. That's what you don't want. No, I don't. <laughs> Ew. Um, Who puts broccoli on a pizza? Uh, next up, favorite filmmaker. Um, oh. yeah, yeah, I got um, I've got a big love for um, I got a big love for all the big three, I guess. Uh, Brad Bird, Andrew Stanton, and Pete Doctor Brad Bird getting to do um, the Incredibles films, and um, <clears throat> uh, Pete Doctor and Stanton uh, doing Wally. Um, Brad Bird also did Ratatouille. Uh, Stanton gets directed Wally. He worked on that story with Pete Docter. Um, he's also going to be writing uh, episodes for Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, I think Wally is Stanton's only. Uh, oh no, it's it's Finding Nemo and Wally are Stanton's main contributions as director. I thought he directed uh, Finding Dory also. Um, Finding Dory. Yes, he did. You're right. Uh, so it's those three because that was Stanton wanting to come back and tell a story again. And he did a good job with that. Pete Doctor gives us Inside Out and Up and um, Soul. I'm, look- I'm looking for it right here. Soul. Yeah. Uh, and Monsters, Inc. 
Um, so I think uh, Pete, Pete Doctor has like a clear good voice. Those those three are some defining voices in in Pixar filmmaking. I feel. Mine. There is, is a lot of wonderful ones here, but those guys stand apart. Mine is Brad Bird, with mm-hmm. a runner up to Andrew Stanton. I do really like Andrew Stanton. I like both the the Nemo Dory films quite a bit. Wally's mm-hmm. great, uh, but Brad Bird is one of my favorite filmmakers ever. And The Incredibles one and two are just so damn good. Um, I love them. I this is like again recency bias, but like uh, I would probably I would probably say Andrew Stanton. Because like Andrew Stanton and Brad Bird, um, they've done a lot of the ones that I've the movies that I like the most. But Domni Shi, who yes. directed Turning Red, this was her directorial debut, and she was the first woman to direct a Pixar movie and a Pixar short. Um, Turning Red is so phenomenal. Like I cannot wait to see what she does next. Like truly, like I I am beyond excited. Because uh, if this is your what you do with your first movie, like goodness gracious, right? So good. Um, yeah, good good pull. I, w- I was also gonna say um, Domi Shi. Because Turning Red is just fantastic, just the way it's shot, the way the story comes out, the way it's the way it's presented is absolutely fantastic. Of course, I'm going to mention Brad Bird because Brad Bird did The Incredibles and it's amazing. And even though there's some controversy surrounding his name, I just got to acknowledge John Lasseter. Sure. He started all of this. He was he's made so many films that that forged my childhood. So hold on. Let's 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 be clear. John Lasseter was the director for those early Pixar films, but yeah. it's not like he started this alone. He started this sure. with Pete Doctor, with right. Andrew Stanton, Joe Ranft. Like all these people were part of that. Yeah. Starting. Yeah. So, um, but Lasseter, but Lasseter was our director for the first three films: Toy yeah. Story, Bugs Life, and Toy Story Two. Yeah. yeah, I would. I got. I mean, I gotta give a shout out to John Lasseter, but I want to say Domi Shi. I mean, it's partially recency bias, but also because I really enjoy that film so much. I thought it was just such a great film, turning red. But and also Brad Bird. And yeah, again, also I want to give a shout out to someone else. Who? Where was that name? Where's the name? Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> also, I it, um Onward's director, uh, Dan uh, Scanlon. I liked his. Sure, I liked sure. that movie a lot. So yeah. Thanks, Dan. I really like basically anything brad bird has directed uh just real quickly just like iron giant and uh he in my opinion he directed the best mission impossible it is four mm. he also directed mm. tomorrowland i know he directed tomorrowland <laughs> buddy i know uh yeah shout out to enrico for luca uh 100 mm-hmm. mag like luca's luca's wonderful to me oh, mm-hmm. yeah. luca's um amazing. let's go to favorite parent or parental figure massimo uh Massimo's pretty good. Um I dad from turning red. It's the dad from uh Luca. Oh, the dad from turning red is mine. Isn't the dad uh, that's... from Luca Massimo? Yeah. Okay. Just second sure. Yeah, he was saying, is it the dad from turning red? I was saying Massimo is the dad oh. from Luca. Okay. Um I I think Massimo is is wonderful. It's hard for me not to put him high up there. Uh Massimo is pretty much at my top because Massimo sees the need and fills the need of a dad for Alberto uh, so quickly. And I think mm-hmm. that's so beautiful. Um, I want to give a shout out to pretty much the only time I, I mention um, onward in, in uh, my time is Laurel. I think Laurel's a wonderful mom mm-hmm. um, oh, yeah. in, on, in onward. I think she's really great. Uh, and Jin is May's father from turning red. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. I think, I think Jin is, great i think Jin is so good his little like uh you can say you can say here and spend time with dad oh <laughs> i'll i'll drive oh <laughs> uh yeah he's my he's mine because he he there's the turn where he sees the camera and he sees that like everything's like been really great since she like embraced the panda uh yeah it's such a great moment uh yeah he's my favorite parental figure Hell yeah. yeah um doc hudson from cars Mm. Yes. yes, I love that. I love the fabulous Hudson Hornet, Doc Hudson. He is just—he's the type of guy who, I mean, yes, he's brash and he's kind of bl- he's very blunt, but at the same time, once you get to know him, once you connect with him, it's—he's such a good voice of wisdom to Lightning McQueen, and also yeah. runner up, Crush. Crush just seems like the chillest dad ever. Crush is a great dad. I, That's great. another director. 
Yeah, that's standard. I, I want to hang out and chill out with Crush. Just to, I love. There's a reason why I love going to Turtle Talk with Crush. There's a reason why, and that's one of the reasons why he's just so chill. And, um, no, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna put up a uh, Mag because Mag mentioned uh, Marlin from Finding Nemo. That's cool. Because that that little fish travels the entire ocean to find his son. He's and, course, pretty good. Yeah, he's right. he is pretty good too. So there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good ones. Um, two two honorable mentions apart from the ones I mentioned before would be uh, Sully to Boo mm-hmm. in Monsters yeah, Inc. Um, I think Sully's a great parental figure. I think that's that's really wonderful. But I gotta give a shout out because it needed to be here to King Fergus in Brave. Oh sure, great Billy, dad. Billy Connolly's character. That's right. Billy Connolly. Yeah, he's a great dad. He just uh, he just loves his family so damn much. Wait, who, I love King who, Fergus. Um, 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 something Thompson. She plays the mom. Lily. Lily Thompson. No, what is it? Lily Thompson? I don't know. It's the mom. Brave. Lily Thompson. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. That's the one I was talking thinking about. Yeah, she plays the mom. But yeah, Billy. I don't know what a girl, but I want to be free. Like, just that whole scene where he's pretending to be married. That was hilarious. <laughs> yes. Uh, Miguel's yeah, great great grandfather. Yeah. I need to watch Brave again, damn it. I need to watch so many more Pixar films. So. Damn, it's almost like we had a week to... I was watching Stranger Things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we'll continue to character you'd most like to befriend. Andy. <laughs> Andy's the guy that you know has everything, and so you definitely want to be over at his place when you're a kid. And then as you this grow is... up, he's definitely the coolest nerd. This is, this is Brandon showing from his... Uh the annual discussion uh forcing a friendship so you could get access to the stuff yeah <laughs> um uh wally i want to oh, befriend sorry. wally um, yeah, that's right. wally wally's wally's a real one uh woody and sully are great too i thought about them but but wally i want to befriend wally uh i think if i was like around uh her age may may and i would be real good friends she's mm. super fun and quirky <clears throat> Might be her age. It was set in two thousand two. Oh shit! You're right. What's up, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have to ask? Yes. Yes. Onward. Barley from Onward. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Wouldn't I it be weird be... hanging out with yourself though? I want to play. <laughs> True. <laughs> I want to be in this D and D campaign. So then, wait. What's the next? What's the answer to the next one? Yeah. If, if Barley's who you want to befriend, who do you want to be? <laughs> Oh shit! Uh. <laughs> uh, can I change my answer? I want to befriend the greedy from and, and you want to befriend the Linguini. I'll take the Linguini so they can give me the food. Sure, sure, that's good. Okay, so Ben wants to be barley, which no, makes she, sense. Yeah yeah okay it's either um, it's either barley or ian because ian can actually do the magic but of course barley knows all the lore and stuff so he can help ian and also he's the older brother i'm an older brother so i, I would definitely want to be barley <laughs> um, funny. yeah so our, our next category is who do you who would you want to be um ryan who would you want to be this is tough because i want to live in a superhero world but I don't. I don't want to be Mister Mister Incredible, so I picked Frozone uh-huh. because he has a stable relationship, and he's a big superhero. He's the, sure. he's a, he's a winner. And he's Samuel L. Jackson, and he has ice powers. I pick. I, I pick. I want to be that guy. I also pick picked Frozone. Yeah. Because like I didn't want to be Mister Incredible because that just seemed hard. Yes. <laughs> but Frozone seems like he's got his his shit together. He's got and his I want stuff together. Exactly. Yeah. I want to be that and yeah. have ice powers. Come on. Um, I want to be Bruce the shark. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. I want to live in the ocean. Um, all right, yeah. If, I, if I'm not picking Bruce, uh, I want to be Buzz Lightyear. Sure. Which one? The, well, probably the toy because that's the only one. That's We're talking right. about the first 25 films, so I want to be Buzz yep. Lightyear. Mm-hmm. As we know, I'm the toy. You know what? I'm from the future. I want to see Buzz Lightyear. I want I, to be Buzz Lightyear. I I want to be a kick-ass toy who can do anything cool. Um, like fall um, style. Yeah. Okay, Mag says he wants friends. He wants to be friends with Massimo from Luca and friends with the characters in Soul. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I'd like be friends with Sully. The best bear hugs. I thought, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Um, okay, our next category, our second to last, is most underrated blank. Uh, you can fill this in with character, score, film, director, whatever Ooh. you want. Whatever oh, you want. Yeah. I got it. Most underrated, I got, I got two. Most underrated character and the most underrated film. Sure. Merida, most underrated character. Mm. I think Merida is a really great character. I, I really like Brave. Um, I think that that the vo- like there's there's very few times where, like voice actor was born for for an animated role and like it it that I believe that actress and Merida are just like linked together. Really mm. like that character. Most underrated film is The Good Dinosaur. Yeah, a lot of people wrote that movie off, but there's some great stuff in that movie. Yeah. Um, the, 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 I always think about the T-Rex cattle wranglers, which is just such a cool idea, uh, visualized really, really awesomely. Uh, I, I think good dinosaur is a very underrated film. Yeah. Um, my most underrated is probably good dinosaur. I think there's a lot that get forgotten a little too easily. Wally falls in that category. Mm-hmm. Bugs life falls in that category. Brave falls in that category. But um, unfortunately, I don't think that I don't think Brave is necessarily underrated. I think Brave just didn't quite meet the criteria that people wanted it to. And yeah. so it's kind of just holding the place that it is. I think you made a good good call with like most underrated character is Merida. Um, I think I I wish that the impact of that film could have been bigger. Yeah. Um, it's it's unfortunate that their one princess story uh, doesn't doesn't have that 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 like punch of Pixar <laughs> magic. Uh, to stick or stick in your brain quite the way some of these other works do. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I think good dinosaur is incredibly underrated for the quality of film that it is. I think if you, if you know what you're going in for, which is that it is a, it is a Western like classic, not, not guns Western, but a classic frontier Western film with dinosaurs. I think you will be set up for a good time. Um, right. Cause that was where the, that was where I felt. And we talked about this before where the marketing failed that movie. Cause it didn't, it didn't showcase the fact that it was a Western. It's not a dinosaur movie. Yeah. It's a um, frontier. It's a frontier Western film told with dinosaurs. Yeah. And I thought that that like watching the movie, I was like, Oh, this is not what I wanted, what I thought it was going to be at all. And in fact, it was exactly what I, what I needed it to be. Yeah. Um, I think, I think to a degree, <clears throat> I would also put cars three and underrated character Cruz Ramirez in that category. Mm-hmm. I don't think either of those get, the the attention they deserve sure so i also have two but they're different from brandon's underrated i would say most underrated performance belongs to phyllis smith who played sadness in inside out Mm, not a lot of people talk about how good she was in that movie she was through they talk they mostly talk about amy poehler who don't get me wrong she did every actor in inside out did an amazing job amy poehler richard kind um bill hater um lewis black Minnie keeling she was really good but not a lot of people talk about phyllis smith's role as sure. and she was a core part of the movie and i never knew who she was and she's from the freaking office yeah, do, I, oh, yeah. Do, do you know how she got cast in the office real quick i did not did she wasn't she like one of the writers for the office no or? no she was the person at auditions reading the line she was part of the casting unit reading oh. lines for people who were auditioning and they realized that she had something and so they put her into the show they created the character of phyllis for the office because of her that's um that's and awesome. that's and that's and that's how she got into it and uh you're right i think she's a wonderful sadness i do yeah. think she's underrated for her performance of sadness yeah and i just freaking forgot my other underrated one <laughs> at all that's okay I'm talking about sadness i'm talking about sadness but yeah I think Phyllis's um, performance, it's, it's a lot of people don't give it the, the, prop, the proper pedestal that she deserves. And, and she was great in that movie. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I like, remember it, I'll come back to it. Right. Sure. This one was hard for me because the underrated movies are the ones that I haven't seen for that mm-hmm. exact reason. Cause I didn't give them a chance. Not that they're bad. I just, I just didn't. Um, I, I said Toy Story four because I feel at least from what I've seen, I really like Toy Story 4, and I've seen a lot of people turn on that movie in the last couple of years. Uh, and maybe that's just like just from what I've seen in my periphery. But like a lot of people are like, that's the sequel we didn't need. And I'm like, I think that movie is I think Toy Story is the only franchise that has had like flawless, flawless movies almost the entire way through. Um yeah. 
So I, I, in a weird way, I would say like a movie that doesn't, that is the fourth in a franchise. Um, but like the people kind of shit on, I think because it is the fourth in a franchise, you know, it's very hard to live in the shadow of the pitch perfect success of toy story three. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think that only speaks to how tough of a job it was to, to top that for people emotionally, that it could be as good of a film as toy story four is, and still kind of go like, yeah, but it's that. It's that Pixar high quality thing again. Like, yeah, like Toy Story three and two, like they were able to do that. Like, that's insane. Um, like, yeah, I, I, I hear you on that. I think that's I think that's a good pick um, attached to that uh, underrated performance of Tony Hale as Forky. Sure. Oh, oh yeah. I, but he, wait, is that underrated? He did get a show. I think it's under I think it's a little underrated uh, because like him getting the show is not necessarily an indication of people's like affection for that character being as strong as I think maybe it ought to be or at least recognition of it. Sure. I'm trash. And did you did you remember I, yes. you did a thing? Uh, yes, I remembered. It was um, most underrated um, comedic character. And I'm putting Francis the ladybug from A Bug's Life, mm. who I never realized was voiced by Dennis Leary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Freaking hilarious. Just the whole, I remember watching that scene where you see, of course you see like the kind of like misogynist um, bugs at the circus who are cat calling the lay bug. And the second she starts on the, it's a guy. Uh, Attached to him, like uh, the, the uh, underrated performance of, of the stick bug. Yeah. (laughs) And frankly, Heimlich, like, uh, like Heimlich. I think I think Bugs Life itself gets yeah. a little isn't bit too Heimlich. Forgotten. Isn't Heimlich one of the directors also? Um, I'm looking it up right now. It's David, he, Hyde, David Hyde Pierce was Slim, the stick bug we were talking about. Yeah. And then um, Joe Ramft. Yes, uh, Joe Ramft was not one of the directors, but he was one of the um, creatives at Pixar. And he, uh, he passed away. Yes, he did. He was he was uh, one of the. Uh, writers and supervisors and um, animators and producers on a lot of the Pixar films. He was one of the people who started Pixar with them, but he was not a director. And yeah, right. he did pass away. Um, yeah. Speaking of Bugs Life, Mag also is, excuse me, Mag also says Bugs Life is underrated for him because yeah. because of the villain in Hopper and it's an homage to Seven Samurai. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to. I want to. I just found some data that I think is really cool. And you probably already know the answer just from doing research. Maybe one of you guys. Do you know what the highest grossing first movie is in pixar's history toy story Mm -hmm. he said "Mm, first first like first film in a franchise thing yeah like which one of the first made the most money out of all of them um i I would say toy story but it could be finding nemo finding nemo must made a billion dollars yeah wow yeah i was Uh, i was gonna guess that and then for a second i second guessed myself and thought it might have been cars i thought it was i didn't think it was going to be finding nemo but finding nemo is like the highest. It's so high. It's like wow. Finding Nemo was was a big big hit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We ran we ran through all our cat. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. We have one more. Favorite film. Do I have to say it? It's The Incredibles. It's, it's The Incredibles. Um. I mean, if I'm being like, if I'm if I'm giving it all, it's Toy Story three. Um. Mm. Like I think Toy Story three is is tops, 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 tops. Um, because if it wasn't Toy Story three, it'd be Toy Story, but it's Toy Story three because Toy Story three somehow surpassed it. Um, but but beyond that, like Coco, Coco's very powerful to me, and Wally, Coco, Wally, and Toy Story three kind of live in the nebulous of the triangle of top Pixar films for me. Right. Yeah. Coco is <laughs> incredible. Mag agrees with you. Yeah. I, I Coco's Coco's simply wonderful. Uh, yeah. Incredibles was mine for for years and years um like i think the superhero aspect is a it does a lot for me but the fact that it's like the like the best version of a superhero thing that's ever been made like also helps um but then i saw wally uh, uh again the first time it was it an impact but it's not as a doll i'm like oh no this is the shit that i'm looking for my entire existence of living now is like hey what if things that don't have souls have souls that's the type of fiction i'm all about so wally that's that's that whole thing baby uh and then i saw turning red so and in about in a couple of years, uh, I guarantee you, Turning Red will be my number one. But it's recency bias, so I will tell you it's Wally. Nice. It's but it's definitely it's definitely those two sitting up there. 
like turning red, like I knew immediately, like, oh, this one, I'm in this one already. Right. Oh, yeah. That's how I felt uh, seeing Coco. Mm-hmm. Ben? It's the Incredibles for me. I can't I can't deny what I what it is. Um I love that film. I love that movie. I love everything about it. Um I remember every almost every time I watch it, when I was watching it back when I was living with my parents, my dad would come in and he's like, What'd you watch it? Incredibles, man, that is a really good movie. And he would sit down and watch it with me for a few minutes. Um another film I've seen a, a lot a bunch, and it's also up there is um Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And just and also for nostalgia purposes, Toy Story. It's yeah. I mean, those Toy Story and Finding Nemo might like jumble a little bit, but for me, if gun to my head, it's it's the first Incredibles film. I don't think anything. I mean, no, I know things can top it. There have been such great films, like Turning Red being one of them. Luca is also up there, and Onward m- maybe not a may not be the best movie, but it's my favorite because it just gets me in all the places that I like. I but in terms of just like quality acting, style, everything that makes Pixar Pixar, Incredibles is the top one for me. Yeah, I think I think Pixar has a great um, repertoire of films to kind of you'll you'll kind of generate different emotions as you watch them throughout the years with different points of your life because they are speaking to so many different points of living. Yeah, um, yeah. it's one of the wonderful yeah. things about Pixar. I, I really <clears throat> excuse me. I really like The Incredibles. Um, it it has my favorite characters in the whole and the whole of Pixar's library. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite directors of all time. It's it's to me it, it is pitch perfect. Everything I love about animation, animated films, everything I love about Pixar, everything I love about just it, it's it merges so many beautiful things and creates a style all all uniquely onto its own. Uh, it is it, it is a great great movie that I just cannot get enough of. It's, it's the Pixar movie I've watched the most. I'll tell you that for sure. It's tough to pick best around a Pixar because I think almost all of them do such a great job of what Brandon just expressed. Yeah, um, yeah. Even the ones that fall short in some places are still such, such incredible. I never feel like anybody made any of the films, even the sequels just to make money. Yeah. yeah. Me too. There's always passion on that screen. Yeah. Um, a uh, real quick mag did mention another uh, underrated Kelsey Grammer, stinky Pete. Oh, in yeah. Toy Story two. That's a great one. Uh, oh great, yeah. Great acknowledgement. Um, That'll do it. This was wonderful. Thank you for going down this large rabbit hole with me, friends of Pixar this, films. This Pixar been, Endgame. This has been such a fun trip down memory lane, just talking about these films. Because, I mean, it Pixar has has been around since we all, all four of us have been small children. Yes. And this come and this studio, even though it is one of Disney's an arm of Disney, it is. Even you're right. We said earlier. Even their worst movie is still a really good movie. In mm-hmm. it's still a good film. Like we we talked about films that are fine or they're not maybe not the best. But do you, we always find something out of these Pixar films, whether we like them or not, that makes us smile, makes us laugh. And I think that's some of the best qualities of a Pixar film is that even if you do or don't like it, there's something in there that you're gonna enjoy. Be it a joke, a character design doesn't matter what there's something in there for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy we did this. I love these movies. Um, getting to revisit them has been wonderful. I wish I watched far more than I actually did. I'm probably there now, now that we've talked about so many of them, I'm like, Oh, I'm probably having a Pixar summer. (laughs) Um, I'll probably be there with you. Cause if I ever kept telling myself, I was like, man, I got to watch some Pixar movies, but then stranger things kept staring me down the barrel. I was like, Ooh, but I got to take care of that first too. All right, All right. but we are not done for the night, so let's move into our book. Club. Actually, I was going to ask. It is, oh, okay. it is now past four hours. Do Jesus. we want to call it a night and move the book club to next week? I'll do whatever you want to do. Ryan is... is, is I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm sleepy. Um, I, right, why I, don't, why don't, I vote yes. I vote why yes. don't we do that? We've gone we've gone far longer than we... This isn't, than we had. This isn't an Evangelion episode. What is this? <laughs> we've gone very long this week, so why don't we move our... Sorry, Sparks. Uh, next week... We will do your book club. Why am I sad? I get to intro twice. (laughs) That is true. Um, Okay, guys. So no book club this week. Uh, Thank you guys for for sitting through with us. Uh, There was a lot of fun doing these Pixar films. We, we, we really love getting to do kind of these, these deep dives on like these things. And I'm really happy that the next one we did was far better than the video game movies. Yeah. Still fun though. Still fun. Mm -hmm. Next week, 
I forgot. Ahead. Sorry, I got to I got to see one of my favorite movies of all time this week because of this list, which I honestly I don't know when I would have watched Turning Red otherwise. Even so, like I'm glad we did this totally. Yeah, me too. Um, getting to revisit some of these, especially like I hadn't seen Incredibles two in a long time. I love that movie. That movie is so damn good. good the movie. Screen Slaver. Oh yeah, good name. That is a really good name for a villain.